remember in 2014, I might remember this forever, is walking in a store and I was doing, I was crafting a barbecue sauce at the time. So mm -hmm. I walked into a store and I looked at the, I was staring at the shelf and I said to myself, I'm going to be here one day. Mm. And I said, but how am I going to make it look different on the shelf, right? I was focused on the packaging, 100%. But you, so that was what? That was seven, almost eight years. That was eight plus years ago. Yeah. So I, would, I would tell myself, be patient. This is not going to happen overnight. It might take longer than you expect. It's so easy for us to look at LinkedIn stories and Instagram stories about people that I launched this product yesterday and now I'm in a thousand doors. Number one, it's probably a lie. <laughs> Number two, if it's, if it's not a lie, they yeah. are backed by someone with a lot of money, or it's like it's this is their third company where they already have the resources. Don't like listen. Your the way you get to market is the way you get to market. Like mm. do what you got to do to make sure it works first. There have been a lot of companies that have gone exploded overnight, gone got to go into Walmart right away, boom. They're out of business in a year because they didn't have the re they didn't have the structure in place to make that happen. So for me, <clears throat> I would just tell myself, listen, you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna get punched in the face a couple of times doing this. Like, just remember, like this is where you want to end up. Like, keep that vision in mind, and those punches won't hurt, right? Like that's that's I still tell myself to this day. Like even when I, you know things happen, things don't go right, I go, it's okay. You learned, you learned. You're now better off because of it. And uh, like even the biggest companies like, like get punched in the face. So it's not the end of the world. And that's, that's constant. Uh, it's a constant lesson for me now and it would be back then too. So welcome to another episode of the Pepe Soup Talk Show. Uh, my name is Aki, I'm here with my partner, Toby. And we have the pleasure of speaking today with uh, Mr. Miles Powell. We, uh, we did an episode earlier with Miles last year, and since then he has scaled his company to uh, being in over 1,200 stores. He has a company, Eight Miles, that uh, produces uh, consumer uh, food products um, focused around mac and cheese. And when we last spoke to Miles, I believe it may have been 12 stores that, that you were in at the time. It was, um, I think we, I mean, I, I, depending on when we had just launched in Target. And so that would have put us at about uh, 300 or so. 300. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. So, all right. All right. So yeah. it's 1200. <laughs> it's still a, I guess, a significant jump. Yeah. And, and I also know that you guys are, are you also doing our virtual orders too now. And, and at the time, I, I believe like that was still something that was kind of like in the, in the pipeline. Uh, so we look forward to hearing about how it's been scaling, scaling up and, and kind of like how things are going with a mile. So uh, I'll let you take it away, Miles, but welcome back to Pepe Soup Talk. I appreciate it being here again. It's always a pleasure. Uh, you know, things have changed and I've learned a lot since we last spoke, but that's that's how entrepreneurship is, right? You just you just keep on learning. Yeah. I, I know one focus of our last conversation was around being able to you talk about entrepreneurship right, and being able to stick through the process of, of what you're, you're working on. Uh, what, what, what does your setup look like right now, as far as your, uh, your operations today versus where it was a year ago? Yeah. So a year ago, <clears throat> we were still self-manufacturing. Uh, we were operating out of a kitchen space in DC and me and a few other people were making the Mac and cheese all day, every day by hand. Right. That's not sustainable because as a, as a CEO, you have to be focused on other parts of the business as well. You know, whether it's fundraising, marketing, sales, I mean, pretty much the gambit of it, right? And so back then, I think we were still even refining the production process because there, there's a lot that goes into scaling up as you grow, right? Making more of it. And uh, what happened was when we start, we kind of hit this critical mass point of, Listen, we're running out of capacity where we are. I'm spending 16 hours in the kitchen. Other parts of the business are not getting, are not, we're not paying attention to. How am I going to restructure things that I can actually, that this is going to be a sustainable model? And so what we did was we ended up co-packing. So we, we found a manufacturer in Texas that's making the product for us. And that allowed me to now focus on growth and uh, profitability, things that are really important. But 
with that with that change, you know, you're now going from being inside the business to being like top down, looking at the entire landscape, which is a crazy different mindset, right? Like, mm-hmm. think about it. I used to my my whole day was like, okay, I need this much cheese, this many eggs, I got to make sure this equipment set up, net, et cetera, et cetera, to being okay. I got to hit a certain goal by next month. I have a meeting. I'm going to plan with this person. I got to think about my marketing strategy. So it's it's been a completely different shift uh, from when we first spoke. And so I feel like there was a drastic change since last time. And there's a lot of elements we want to touch on. But, you know, one of the biggest components, at least for entrepreneur, you're always working that nine to five and also balancing your job component. And I think I believe it was on your LinkedIn or somewhere you had a post you were able to move away from your nine to five and focus on it uh, full time. And then it looks like right after the expansion kind of went off and just so many milestones, you know, no pun intended, was hit <laughs> since the last time uh, you've been here. So what, what was the, I guess, the critical point? What was that flip, that switch? You know, you're on the ground for, I think, 10 plus years. But now yeah. between, you know, the 10, 10 years plus versus a year now, the the launch is just completely different. How did that happen? What You know, what was the flip? Yeah, so I'll, I'll bring y'all back to 2017. Um, I had moved to DC to grow the business. I was still working full time, but I wanted to really start to make, quote unquote, make some money, right? Turn into an actual business, not a hobby. At the time, I actually quit my full time job because I just felt like this is the only way to do it. Two things that were different then. Number one was I didn't know how to grow a business. And so when I quit, it was I didn't really have a plan. It was just like, I'm going to quit and figure it out. Number two, I think at that time, at that age, I was still really attracted to the allure of being a full-time entrepreneur, right? The the supposed freedom, not wake, not have your own boss, all that stuff. Unfortunately, because I didn't know how to scale a business, I didn't have the resources around me. I ended up I ended up getting a full-time job after you know four to five months because I burned through all my cash. There wasn't significant growth, and I said, "Yeah, I gotta I gotta get some money in my pockets again," and so. What it did was though, it like I was able to scratch that itch, right? That knowing what it feels like to be a full-time entrepreneur. But now I'm going, okay, when I do this again down the road, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be in a better position to be successful. And so you fast forward uh four, four and a half years later, right? I'm in this position where we were in Target at the time. Um, there were a couple of other retailers that expressed commitment. And because of that, I knew capacity standpoint i didn't have the time of the day to do both like it was it would be impossible and if i tried i would burn everything would just collapse and um i made the decision to say you know what i now have a much better vision of what i want to do how i want to do it i've got the momentum i don't have that i don't have the contract saying hey here's a million bucks quit and you'll get it it was more of like okay i feel where this is going i know put my time to it that we're going to be able to scale quickly. And that's exactly what we did, right? We went from doing like 8,000 a month in revenues to 30 to 40 for that 40,000 a month, a couple of months later. Wow. Uh, but that momentum had started prior to quitting. And I think that was the big difference from last time. Gotcha. 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 It, it, we, we, Miles, when you think about going from, you can talk about like the, the lure of entrepreneurship and then you also talked about, starting a business versus like scaling a business. And I feel like those are two different skill sets. Like when you're in the kitchen, you're making the mac and cheese, like you're doing all the measurements, like you're sort of like in control of all like the, the day-to-day like nitty gritty of like sort of being on sort of in the front, on the front line in a way. Yeah. And then you make that switch to focusing more on the growth and, and what you guys can do to make sure that you're scaling what has it been like sort of letting go of control of that day-to-day life work and then also the people who you have in place to to now handle that and and so like being able to trust that all of that would be taken care of right especially when you're first starting because I, I guess once you make that transition then it's all right you're now sort of in a new position you're in a new place mentally also but what was it like making that transition to the, the sort of like the growth role that you're playing now? Yeah, so a lot of it's it's a mental game, right? So I think it's important in the beginning that you're on the front line because you need to know your product better than anyone else, how it, you know, how it functions, the benefits. Like you need to really have a really core 
understanding of what all that means. Because so when you make that transition, you have to be able to translate that to people that you bring on to support. Um, and, I, and the mindset thing is huge because, you know, back then I would wear a t-shirt and, and a backwards ball cap everywhere. Meetings too, like, it, cause it was, it's why I dressed at the kitchen and that's how I was just, that was my persona everywhere. When you start to transition and be more, you know, you kind of go from being owner to CEO where yeah. you know, I gotta wear, I gotta wear, I gotta wear the tie, right? At sometimes, right? I gotta, I gotta have a different outlook on the, I gotta think of the business as a brand, not just a product. Um, and that takes time for me, right? Because I was so used to being in the trenches. <clears throat> it was hard to bring someone in and say, hey, I would like you to run production for me, right? I need to trust you to do it on my behalf while I focus other things. You can't do that though, if you don't know your product 100%. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of it, and in terms of like who you bring in, it's, it's networking. You know, you need to talk to people. You need to find someone that kind of shares your values, is dedicated to their tasks, just like you are. Um, and you have to be comfortable with letting go, which is, I know it's generic, but it's hard, you know, it's, it's, it's real hard, uh, especially when you've been doing it for five, six years to say, Hey, you take care of marketing for me. I'm going to take care of this, but every, that, that's, that's, you have to do it because you can't, if you try to do it all, like I was doing, you're going to burn out number one. Mm. And there's certain things that you're not good at that you can bring someone in as four times as good, right? So also recognizing your weak points and filling those in with other people, it's gonna help your business grow exponentially. I remember we had uh, a guest last year who spoke about being a CEO of her company and how there is no real, there's no book that teaches you like, this is how, to, this is how you be a CEO and you have, different people who kind of go about it differently and pick up things along the way. And you have to sort of, you have to become a better leader. And also this, you have to kind of figure it out as you go along for you. You mentioned sort of moving from like an owner to a CEO with your company. What have been the biggest lessons for you as you're sort of shifting into, uh, if you sort of shifted into this different role? I think it's, you know, speaking with other entrepreneurs and thought leaders about your own confidence, right? In terms of future plans. Mm -hmm. I think it's typical, especially for folks who look like us, we put a cap on what we have, what we can do, right? So the typical question is like, where do you see yourselves in four years? It's very easy to say, oh, we're gonna have a modest growth. We'll hit 15 million in sales because that's what most people do in this space. There's a certain, I mean, do it right but you need to have the confidence to say, listen, we're going to be the biggest and best thing the grocery stores have ever seen. Mm. Um, that man, that manifests in itself. You know, it gives you the ability to almost think creatively outside the box and be a bit aggressive too. Because if you think of all the su most successful companies you encounter, that's what they do. Um, they, they set a really high goal, but they put a plan in place to achieve that goal. And that's the CEO mindset, right? Um, and you want to be able to invigorate other people on your team. Like you want them to share that vision with you. Um, you're now not thinking about next week all the time. You're thinking about next year, five years down the road, what footprint you want to leave as a brand. Like what, I, what I keep thinking, okay, what if, when people say eight miles, what do I want them to think of? Um, it used to be, I want them to think we have the best mac and cheese. That's product focused and that's cool. But what about the brand? I mean, you start thinking on those levels, you transition away from the day-to-day -day owner to this five, 10-year CEO, uh, mm -hmm. which is critical. Uh -huh. So I got two, two follow-ups in regards to that. Um, so the first one, um, you know, being a minority, of course, who worked in the professional world, nine to five, um, and there's some things you have to, you know, navigate in that landscape versus you know running your own company and then there's some unknowns there's kind of like a barrier to not necessarily entry but knowledge and navigation and having that certain type of mentorship in order to get everything right were you able to how are you able to connect with mentors or get the knowledge transfer that you needed um in order to get the success you have today you know i'll be honest these days the information that in the mentorship that's available is by far the most we've ever seen. Um, you know, there's a lot of companies that are offering accelerator programs, mentorship programs. I mean, when I first started out, none of this was available. And so early on, it was just trial by fire for me. 
I was just learning and doing, right? I was Googling, YouTubing, and whatever I fit, I fell flat on, I fell flat on and learned it the next time. Um, once you get, so once you get past kind of that startup stage, the questions become a lot more, I'll call it ambiguous. You know, it's no, it's no longer, hey, how do I file business taxes? It becomes, how do I promote my company at grocery, which there is no one answer to that, right? And so the lessons you, you, at this point, is very great to connect with other folks in your industry. So for me, you know, I, I chat with other entrepreneurs in CPG all the time, just to hear how they're doing it, what's worked for them, what's not. It's that knowledge transfer that that allows me to kind of break through some of these these pain points that I have. Mm-hmm. Even still, I learn things regardless of all the information that comes in, right? Because you make decisions based on instinct, and sometimes your instincts aren't correct. So uh, there have been many times where I, I, you know, I look down the road and I'm like, my man, Miles, that was a dumb choice. But mm-hmm. now that's in here, right? And not only will I not make that mistake again but I can transfer that knowledge to other people so they don't make the mistake. And I really believe that, you know, as a community, that's our biggest, our biggest hurdle is information. So if I can provide that information, the better off we all are. And then with that, how were you able to gain, I guess, recognition or, or respect in the space? Um, you know, everyone, you know, it kind of becomes a, a, a tag phrase. Everyone wants to be an entrepreneur, but you know, there's not a lot of people that want to put the work or the grit into it. How are you able to um, provide that kind of persona? You know, this is what it is, and get that respect from your peers to actually want to help and provide the guidance. I think it was knowing why I'm doing like, why I'm doing this because it's easy to sniff out someone who's just doing it because they think it's a cool idea. Um, the separation is those folks when they get hit when they hit a wall or barrier they're probably going to crumble because they're going to say you know what I'm going to create a this is not working as planned I'm going to create a new idea but for someone like me where it's tied into my upbringing it's tied to my passion there's no such thing as crumbling at the wall right you got to punch through it and other people that are not I mean just people in general recognize that right you know that you you know the people and the brands you follow because you really believe in what they're doing or you feel their passion. And that showcases, I'll call it validity, right? Because people say, okay, they're all, they're, they're about about it. Like I know they're doing this from the heart and, you know, let's support him or her however we can, because I believe in what they're doing. You're still going to have people that don't fully understand. They might, discredit what you're doing right but if you can stand firm in what you're doing and why you're doing it you're going to get that recognition um you know people are going to just be naturally attracted to your story and one last question just from the initial statement you made um you said you know initially you were working on the product you have to make sure your product is a one can stand on its own um so once you were able to establish that um you said you're working now on the brand what is the brand? And if you can kind of talk through a walk through, what's the process of molding a brand or or what's the 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 idea you have so far and how's that going? Yeah, so I did it backwards, unfortunately. So when I first started this company in 2015, I did a very, very small brand. I crafted the brand like kind of top, how do I say it? Uh we did the bare minimum right i mean i didn't know anything about branding i just thought hey you need cool packaging cool colors boom 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 we never really did a full deep dive into why and so for the first four to five years we just operated on product right we had a little story but it didn't really mean much it wasn't until actually earlier this year when i kind of looked at the brand my product line who was buying it and i'm like you know what i don't really understand i don't understand why i'm why we're doing this like what's 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 our unique selling point? What's our value prop? You know, why would someone pick us up? And so I actually hired a branding agency to help me with this. And it was almost therapy because we went back to the roots, right? From my childhood. And we talked all the way through high school, college and beyond. And what it did was it, it, I ended up crafting a story to why I'm doing this. And it tied directly into the product. Um, I would advise you do this early on and not kind of after the fact, like I did. But it's important to recognize that if you have to, um, because then that tells you who you're t- who's your audience, you know, what problem are you solving for them? Why are they going to care about what you're doing? And as I mentioned before, it's going to continue to provide motivation for you as well. 
Um, I would honestly say branding is probably the most important thing you can do as a startup is figuring out what your brand actually means. Uh, Because without that, you're going to hit a barrier in terms of selling product, especially in food. Um, You know, food being so competitive, like you've got two seconds to grab someone's attention. So you need to have something that's very impactful. Thank you for for that, Miles. Can you also talk a little bit about what you would say from doing that branding, from working with a branding agency, what did you learn is the most important aspect of building a brand? So for me, I learned that it was family time. Um, We talk about why I'm doing this, you know, on a surface level, it's love of food, right? But then if you dig in a little deeper, it's the emotion behind it, you know, conversing, spending time with family with foods on the table at the dinner table. That's been my motivation all along. All along. I just never really put that on paper. Mm. It was like, okay, I've got these really core memories of growing up with my family at the dinner table. That invoked this passion for food in general. And, by, and when I cook now, I'm actually replicating those memories through the stuff that I make. And this is the way, and this is how I'm sharing that passion with the world. So, like I said, that was never on paper, on the packaging, on the website, anywhere until I had these conversations with this agency, right? Because it was like, wow, this makes, like, it was like light bulbs, right? Things were, the the dots were being connected. I'm like, man, so this is what I'm doing, what I'm doing, right? Um, That was the, uh, that was the evolution. That's you. That's you. And then again, I know that you are also now selling uh, virtually as well. You you sell online too. What was it like putting that in place? Because I know that when we had spoken last time, you had spoken about some of the challenges around working with food and being able to um, sell food online because it's a little different than, than other kinds of products. Yeah. So we actually did a really small beta on our online shop. Uh, it's paused for now because we we were trying to figure out the logistics and the, the the freight and all that. The plan is to do a full scale launch later this year um, because we want the experience to be unique, not just hey, you can buy the same product that you get in grocery online because that's mm-hmm. not just going to catch someone's attention. Um, you know, we want to make it so that when someone receives our product, it's a very unique experience. So it's memorable, right? And so. The, you know, there is capital required to get that set up. And so and that's what we're doing now is structuring that so that it can be exactly how we want it. Because yeah, it's shipping frozen is tough. And so we want to, we want to make sure we do it right. Where? That's true. I remember, um, what's the name of these things that, that was popular back in the day? Blue Apron. Yeah. Those kind of stores. Yeah. They, they, they had a quick, you know, launch or whatever when they were pretty popular. But like we were saying, there were some logistic issues that kind of slowed down their growth and, you yep. know, they're not as well heard of today <laughs> as they were back at their peak, um, which, you know, it's also an issue with perishable items. Um, with that being said, it's just still part of your expansion and, and growth of Eight Miles, the brand. Um, you're able to do more, but how are you able to find, actually, this is back to the same questions, you know, giving up, uh, giving up some responsibilities to other people. How are you able to confirm or have the kind of feeling like, oh, this is the right people for the job, or this is where I need to be in, you know, this is the direction to go? Yeah. So, I mean, just daily conversations, right? You kind of see how they work on a day-to-day like not only are they doing like are they accomplishing things but how do they go about it so for me personally I like to be surrounded by motivated and creative people right um that can provide feedback they're not going to just take a task and say yes I'll do that I want to hear like what you think about what you're doing and they might be offering a different suggestion it might be hey um I think we should do it this way or this is a great idea but how about we add this to it right um and people that want to want to see us succeed together, right? So the monitoring is, it's ongoing, right? It's like, hey, always checking in, um, engaging their level of interest too, because I want them to be fulfilled too, right? If I feel like they're not fulfilled at all and they're just kind of doing this for a temporary thing, I want to ask them, say, hey, is there anything else that you want to get involved in? This is a startup company, essentially. And there's a, there's so many things you can do. And that's the fun part. Like I, I have an intern and I said, listen, this is going to help me, but I want it to help you too. I want you to come, I want you to leave this internship and say, 
listen, I learned thousands of things that I can apply for future reference. So, you know, that's how you evaluate and understand that it's not always a fit. And that's okay. Um, you adjust that you adjust as needed. What does your uh, organizational structure look like right now? Super tight, uh, not on purpose though. So we, uh, you know, we we brought in a uh, operations manager part time uh, recently. She's been a big help, and we've got a uh, you know a couple of interns, and that's it. And so we, we're looking to hire a COO in the next couple of months too. Um, but for now, we are still very lean. Um, but that's because we kind of had this hyperbolic growth but we didn't have enough capital to hire for a team. So that's what, mm-hmm. we're, that's what we're working on now. Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, so something I've noticed about entrepreneurship and working on an idea is that as you, as the idea grows and it evolves, you as yourself also grow and evolve. How do you feel you as a person has changed as your, as your company has grown and as, you, as you've been building eight miles, like how is miles where, where you are right now different than miles when you were first starting and as you've been going along your journey? Oh man, I'm a whole different person. So <laughs> yeah. it's, it's pretty intense. I'll be honest. So, you know, the miles of 2015 that started versus the miles of 2017 when he quit first time versus even the miles of when he quit again, they're all different people. Um, the core, they're the same at core, but completely different so you know the miles of today it's funny uh doing this is extremely stressful like i I always tell people listen that's why i say like know why you're doing this because you're going to go through the ringer like you're going to get tested because of that at some point i realized that it was all consuming in my life like if there was something bad happening at work that was my last thought before going to bed my first thought waking up in the morning and it became so consuming that I began to worry about just my overall mental health, right? I mean, I'm not, from a physical standpoint, I was always working out to, to make sure I was good there. But mentally, like, it, it got to a point where I said, I need to adjust how I, how I think about these things. And so um, recently, I started meditating. Um, I would meditate in the morning at night. And I mean, like, early morning, like three in the morning, uh, meditate at night and look for some balance throughout the day, right? It might be a 15 minute pause at 11 a.m. to just kind of focus on something not work related, right? Or enjoy something small. Because what that does is it allows me to breathe and allows me to refocus as needed and focus better in general and kind of bring in some of that balance into my life that I was missing for a while, which which it's crazy the way it works because now I'm more confident about things that I'm doing, clear headed, right? Things that would typically send me off the rails, bad news. Now I'm a little more level-headed about. Yeah. Uh, I, I can think it through. So yeah, that's been. I mean, that's been a huge revelation for me recently, and I, it's helped. Like I can tell you straight up, the past. And this is pretty recent, but the past couple of weeks, man. Like I'm. I feel like I'm in more control, which mm-hmm. which is really important. Go ahead. So how do you feel, um, you know, you just said it's, it's very tasking. How do you feel you're able to, um, I guess, separate miles of the businessman versus miles the personal life? Um, I know meditation is kind of new, but how are you able to, you know, enjoy yourself while going through this journey? Yeah, so I'll say this too. The CEO miles and the miles outside of this, that's the same same values, which is which is great, right? Like, so transparency, honesty dedication focus uh motivational like all those stuff are on both hats right so uh throughout this journey i am able to now like today for instance you know i might take an hour to watch tv right which just something to kind of refocus i might spend an hour with the family and in that moment it's family there's nothing else that's happening up here it wasn't the case before. I'd be distracted thinking of other stuff and you can't focus on what's important because then when I switch back to, okay, I got to do this task, I'm 100% focused there. And so, because as, you know, as a business owner, you're, and I'm an, I'm an engineer by trade. So I'm always thinking about problems and problem solving. So my brain's on a constant loop of what to do next, what problem to solve, what opportunity exists. I need that breathing time to prioritize. And like I said, refocus. And that actually, it actually helps me personally. So I'll give you a, a funny story. 
around the time after I first started meditating, one of the one of the things they they say is, you know, whatever you're doing, focus on that 100. percent So I ended up going to Home Depot, and I walked into Home Depot and I said to myself, all that matters right now is Home Depot. And I walked down the aisles and got you know, focused, grabbed what I needed, walked out, and I was like, that felt different. You know, I, I wasn't thinking about the next task; I was thinking about the right now. And I apply that to everything now. If I'm eating dinner, I'm focused on what I'm eating. My phone's down. If I'm ha- if I'm in a Zoom meeting, I'm focused on that Zoom meeting. My email's down, right? Like it trains the brain to be hyper focused, and it makes you less frantic and less stressed out. My mindfulness, I feel, is so important as an entrepreneur, and, and that's a that's a word right there about like really being in the moment. And it's also, I think, easier said than done sometimes. <laughs> like, what, what, what do you use like meditation apps or like how do you usually meditate? Yeah, so well, I just I just ran through a couple of free trials that are, they just burned out on me. So <laughs> now uh, I'm going to YouTube <laughs> to, okay. to find some some meditation there. Um, you know, it's a process, and I think that's that's going to be my struggle to sticking with it because it's really hard for me. You know, you're telling yourself to not shut down thinking, but to acknowledge your thoughts and, and like focus on just like your body at some point. Yeah. You know, it's, it's hard. It's really hard. I'm not going to lie. I'm only two, three weeks in. Okay. I I'm telling you, I felt, I felt the difference and I tell mm-hmm. myself, okay, keep it up. And it might take a year, but it yeah. makes, it'll make me a better person because of it. Where? Yeah, so I was going through your your social, and I saw those one picture I saw, or like segment I saw of a, a Kraft mac and cheese, and then it uh, switched with with my the Miles product, and it is, it made me think about because you see these products in the stores and these, these packaged goods, and it's like you just you just see them there, but like but to be able to you know talk with someone who is literally taking an idea from scratch and. And it's it's walking us through that process of like what it actually takes and and took to like get it to that final, um, you know, like that that final that final product for people who are starting what you're starting and and they, and they have like a consumer good a consumer package good product a food product and given all your experience because you're ten plus ten plus years in now right with this uh, I am almost let me see seven seven and a half. Something like that. Seven and a half years in. Yeah, I misspoke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I retired. The, the, the amount of stress makes you feel like 10 plus. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. What would uh like what would you like the what would you tell like, either the younger miles or someone who's starting this today? What would you how would you tell them to go about this uh, given all the the trial and error that that you've gone through and all the lessons that you've learned, like, like what would sort of be like that, that blueprint um, that if you were start if you were starting this today, how, like, how would you go about it differently? So kind of what I spoke on before is focusing on brand day one, like what you do, why you're doing this. Um, I remember in 2014, I might remember this forever is walking in a store and I was doing, I was crafting a barbecue sauce at the time. I walked into a store and I looked at the, I was staring at the shelf and I said to myself, I'm going to be here one day. Mm. And I said, but how am I going to make it look different on the shelf? Right. I was focused on the packaging hundred percent, but you, so that was what, that was seven, almost eight years. That was eight plus years ago. Yeah. So I, would, I would tell myself, be patient. This is not going to happen overnight. It might take longer than you expect. It's so easy for us to look at, LinkedIn stories and Instagram stories about people that I launched this product yesterday and now I'm in a thousand doors. Number one, it's probably a lie. Number two, <laughs> if, it, if it's not a lie, they yeah. are backed by someone with a lot of money or it's like, it's, this is their third company where they already have the resources. Don't like, listen, your, the way you get to market is the way you get to market. Like mm. do what you got to do to make sure it works first. There have been a lot of companies that have gone, exploded overnight, gone and got going to go into Walmart right away. Boom. They're out of business in a year because they didn't have the re- they didn't have the structure in place to make that happen. So for me, <clears throat> I would just tell myself, listen, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna get punched in the face a couple of times doing this. Like just remember, like this is where you want to end up. Like keep that vision in mind. And 
those punches won't hurt, right? Like that's that's I still tell myself to this day. Like even when I, you know things happen, and things don't go right, I go, it's okay. You learned, you learned. You're now better off because of it. And uh, like even the biggest companies learn, I, I get punched in the face. So it's not the end of the world. And that's that's constant. Uh, it's a constant lesson for me now, and it would be back then too. Man, I just gotta say, man, I, I really admire your mindset because even, even compared to a lot of um, other people, I just feel like a lot of most people would have stopped <laughs> before you, you got to to where you are, and and like what just really seeps through as we talk to you is like your mindset is so rock solid, and it shows how important mindset is to what you're working on like, and the business you're working on, and and so like to get to the point you are now and to like have the outlook that you do now. I mean, I think it's, it's easy to underestimate how important the mindset aspect is to, to the business. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I'd say, you know, guys, it's funny, what started that was actually engineering. Um, when I was in, when I was in school, so I, in high school, I got good grades. Right. And it was like, but it was like a hundred percent input. I got a hundred percent output. Like I've studied mm-hmm. hard. I got an A. I stayed okay. I got a B. Like it made so much sense. Go to yeah. college. I put in a hundred percent. I get forty percent out. Like it was such. It was so different because that curriculum was so difficult, and I wasn't prepared for it. Like for four years, I got my butt kicked. I mean, it was it was literally. Like I studied for nights and nights and nights and get like a seventy, the best, right? And I'm like, but that that gave me like this resilience that I never thought I'd have. Where. I left college and it was like, oh man, I've been through hell for four years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got, but I got this degree. Like I, I made it. I made it to the other side. Okay, I'm now going to do whatever it takes to feel that way again, again, and again. So, <clears throat> so in business, same thing, right? Like after every battle I've had, and come out like you know with the battle scars, but still fighting. I'm like, all right, this like this feels good now. And so that's all. That's an always motivating factor. Mm. Uh, just to chime in there i feel like just just entrepreneurs and anybody that has a has big dreams i think our vision yeah it has to be greater than what we're going through or to get mm. um even when we talk about real estate trading yeah. and stuff like that we, we take some big losses yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like that's a lot of money yeah. if you just step in the bank i'd have been okay but yeah. you know you you we all have a greater vision of where we want to be in the future and you yeah. know the the losses we take right now it's it's less than what we're going to be if we you know stick to it and you know pivot the way we want to yeah not be you know yeah, you gotta, sure. you got you got to be comfortable with being at rock bottom like that's yeah. that's the truth the truth right like there have been points in my life where it's like i just see zeros everywhere and i'm like I scratch my head and i go man this, this is how it's going to end like really like <laughs> no, 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 I work too hard. It can't end like this, and that's, that's, can't that's, go out that's like yeah. I can't go out like this, man. Like that, that's the flip, though, right? Because then you go, your mindset goes into like, I'm gonna do whatever it takes. You know, I'm gonna make it happen. And uh, like my mom, every time something like that happens, my mom says the same thing. She goes, "It'll work out." Such a simple, it's such a simple thing, thing to say, yeah. but if you think that way. It like you go from being it goes from being desperation to motivation, you know. Mm-hmm. Like, all right, let's let's put on let's put on the big boy pants. We're gonna figure this out. Right. Mm-hmm. On that note of branding and and focusing more on the branding, how has social media played a played a part in that? Mm. Listen, uh, social media prior to TikTok, I thought I was pretty good at. But now with TikTok being the way it is, I'm not that good at it <laughs> anymore. You know, it's one of the reasons I hired an intern because mm-hmm. it's one, it's a space I'm not proficient at, but it allows me to tell my story, which is great. Um, but there's a certain strategy that goes to social media. You have to, you know, it's good to bring in some help for that. And food being such a social media friendly thing, like everyone loves to talk about food. That's our one of our, that's one of our key ways of talking to our consumer. Um, we've got a lot of work to do still, you know, we want to, we want to be recognizable on that platform. We'll get there. Um, but I, it, it's, it just allows you to amplify your voice like none other. And that's why I like it the most. And I'm looking forward to just growing that space. Where, cool. And then, um, cool. Oh, oh, you want 
Yeah, sure. So, so one of the evolutions um, of Eight Miles, I remember way back when you first first started. Um, I'm not sure if we talked about this in the previous interview. You had the barbecue sauce, yeah. uh, sauces on your product line, and then you switch over to the mac and cheese. Yeah. Um, and in terms of expansion, since you're in this good place, do you have any other product offerings or different things you want to, you know, incorporate? Yeah, most definitely. So, you know, us being a comfort food brand, I what I do is I think of, okay, what items on the dinner table did I get most excited about as I was growing up? Uh, one of the things that I want to introduce to the market is shrimp and grits, frozen, right? So like, it's these items that are just pure comfort and happiness, clean, but happy, right? Like, it's, it's an, I, I want it to be an item that you remember eating because, but everything that you ate came out of your mom's pantry. Like there wasn't any foreign substances, no fake stuff. Like it's all real. Because I want someone to walk down the frozen food aisle and goes, and go, what is that? Oh my God. And they have flashbacks. And they go, oh, I remember my mom's shrimp and grits. Right now, my mom, I, I can't cook it because of whatever. My mom's not, I moved out of the home. I want to replicate that emotion. Boom, I want to get eight miles. So that's exactly what I want. Because frozen right now is all about convenience. You walk down the aisle because you're desperate to it. You're like, I don't have time to cook. Got to make something quick. I'm going to grab it off the shelf. As opposed to, Yo, I can't wait to to buy this because it's so it's like ice cream, right? Like you go to get ice cream because you're like you're happy. You're like, I'm getting ice cream today. I want the same feeling for for a frozen meal. So uh shrimp and grits definitely coming soon. We're thinking about a, a premium breakfast line down the road too, and uh a couple of other items as well. And with that decisions, is there like a certain uh strategy like, oh, this will work well in the market or more of still more of the emotional aspect of some of these product offerings. Yeah, we're definitely focused on the emotional, but it's got to taste good too. Um, one of the things that we're starting to get into now is channel strategy, which is figuring out like which products belong where. Because early on, it's just like, whoever wants to take it, take it, you know, sell it wherever. But then you start to realize who your audience is and where they shop. And that's, that's part of this whole rebrand thing too. It's like, okay, who enjoys our mac and cheese the most? Where do they shop? Why do they shop? So. There might be a case where the shrimp and grits is only a Midwest and South and a South thing, not West Coast, right? Um, that's what we're doing now is, is figuring out placement for the Mac as well as other future items. The twelve hundred stores that you're in is that is that within the U.S.? Yeah, that's all U.S. based. Are, are you thinking about what uh, this could look like internationally uh, eventually? Yeah, so it's funny. Um, mac and cheese is pretty well known throughout a lot of countries, but yeah. Taste preference is different too. So uh, there was a guy that I met from Canada. I asked him about my mac and cheese and he was like, oh, we don't like American mac and cheese. It's too cheesy. And I was like, too cheesy. You know, like, like that's the stuff you got to think about. Uh, <laughs> in Europe, you know, they have a different, they call it, I forget what they call it, like shells and cheese. I don't know, it's something different. So there may or may not be an international play. It just depends on okay research right you gotta just dig into it a bit yeah right, so i got uh i got one uh more question for you yeah. and um I, we didn't ask you this last time so we gotta ask you this this time and that is um jollof rice <laughs> nigerian or Ghanaian jollof what, what 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 do you prefer man i feel like it's a trap question <laughs> uh i mean i'm i'm biased only because the last few that i have have been nigerian so okay. that's that okay. <laughs> i mean listen i i'm a, I'll, I'll eat them both right <laughs> but uh i gotta go nigerian <laughs> Good you got you got two nigerians sitting in front of you so <laughs> <laughs> that's the right answer awesome yeah um, and then just just one one other thing. So with the different product offerings, um, I know you started with frozen foods. Uh, is there any visions of creating like a restaurant or any sort yeah, of? Yeah. I've um, <clears throat> I've dabbled with a concept that's like a fast casual, but for mac and cheese. Um, I actually wrote a business plan for it and put it on the back burner for when I want to start to introduce that to the portfolio. But uh. Yeah, like imagine like a build your own mac and cheese station. They have a couple of those in Cali, uh, maybe one in the Midwest too, but 
that's like our, and that goes back into when I talk when I was talking about like vision as a CEO, like thinking kind of outside the box, think, thinking a little bigger than you normally do. So that's why, that's what that's there for as a, a future plans. And in terms of vision, if, if you're able to share, what are your like, um, your, again, if, if you're free to share, your big plan or big visions for mac and cheese overall in the next five to 10 years? Yeah, so you know, outside of just consumer package building, we want to be in everywhere we belong. Uh, I think that's a key distinction. Like we want to be, it might be five thousand doors, it might be ten, it might be twenty. Depends on where we fit. We want to have four to five different products, so mac and cheese and and four others. The mac and cheese bar that I mentioned, I want that to be at at least a number of locations. And then for me, which I haven't figured out the format, but I want to be able to have this educational component of entrepreneurship and teaching it to folks in, you know, maybe underprivileged communities or just communities in general where there's so many good ideas, but they don't know what to do with those ideas. Like, I mean, everyone has an idea, I feel like, right? And they may wake up and be like, oh, I had this cool concept for this, this, this. If you don't know how to, if you don't have the resources around you to teach you how to manifest that, it's going to die alone. And the educational piece for me, I think is so important to kind of create that generational wealth and that impact. Mm -hmm. And so being done what I've done and been what I've been through, man, I've got so much to offer. It'd be so selfish of me to just keep it to myself. So I really want to start to, to provide that kind of give back program, that, that mentorship program that does just that. Now, Marv, I mean, we really appreciate you sharing your knowledge and like you said, like you've you've seen so much now and like you have so much knowledge and, and wisdom that you've gained from your experience. And so uh, that's, it's really an honor to have you on, have you on the show and to be able to see the, see the progression. And we hope that, you know, when you hit the 15 mil in sales, <laughs> you know, along with, with other goals too, we can um, you know, continue, hit, you know, you continue to share, um, share what that journey. Oh journey. yeah. Definitely, because next time you guys talk to me, I'll say the same thing. I'll be like, man, I was such a different guy in 2022. Like, you know, <laughs> it's, it's funny, man. You don't, you, don't, you don't know what's happening. You don't know what's coming up. But, you know, I, it's, 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 it's a joy, though, honestly. You know, I talk about the stresses a lot, but this is what I was built and meant to do. Like, mm. I, I feel it. This is like, I just, I love the journey. That's my whole thing is I'm such a, I'm so easily motivated that when it, when there's like always I'm I'm always love goal seeking. So when I can when I can create those lofty goals and go after them, that just like gets me going. So yeah. um but no listen I, I enjoy talking to y'all and and uh, I hope you know that I got now a, a taste for jollof rice. Um so I might, I might have to I might have to try to uh, cook something up here later today. Mm, okay. Okay. Do you see that a good good uh West African spot? Yeah they got, they got a couple right yeah mm -hmm. man I might have to hit one up because that's what I'm saying. I got a, I got a craving for it now. Mm. And then, and if you want to just leave our, our audience with uh, just a couple of words, just as as they're going off and, and doing their own ideas and and working on what they're working on. Um, yeah, um, I'll reiterate. I can't say it enough, but know why you're doing what you're doing. Number one thing: don't be afraid to fail. Don't like write write everything down. Right. Like any, you should have it. You should have notepads of thoughts and ideas and recognize early on that may not be a smooth ride, but manifest the end goal. Like I said, be so determined and dedicated that you know, no matter what, that's going to be me in five years. Combine those things, like you can't be stopped. Man. Yeah. Thank you so much again, Miles. Yeah. No doubt. Appreciate y'all having me. For sure.